Well, joining me is uh, Duan Turner, head of Energy FM and the Sound. I have to say, at this point, of course, I do a program on that. But we're not talking about that part of things today. We're talking about actually. I, I thought we'd bring you in to talk about the TT. It's back, and there's a massive change in how it's going to be presented. And I know you've got an interest in that, but also, first of all, the overall opinion. What do you think about this live TV and all the way they're, they're shaking it all up? Well, I think it's good. Uh, I mean, I've I've got a vested interest in the live TV because, as you know, I, I do a lot of freelance work uh, anyway for, for motorsport film and with the guys at Greenlight and that. And I, I think it's, it's really exciting, certainly from from my perspective. I'm going to be one of their team oh. out around the circuit, don't know where yet. And I know the guys at Greenlight are working really hard on putting that together. And it's, it's it, all being well, it's going to look fantastic. OK. Energy FM has covered it in the past. In little bits, and you, Jeff Callum was used, and all that. He sort was, of yes. Um, it's, I, I'm trying to get my head around what's happening now because they hold the rights. The, the government now hold the rights, but they can give it. You can you can have some pit, you know, audio. Max Radio can have audio. Three FM can have anyone can have audio or something. Right. This is this is the TT radio commentary. Yes. Um, well, if we just rewind a bit, for years we've been complaining that um, access to the TT was was heavily restricted, and what happened was there were no rights originally. Um, Manx Radio did it, did it really well. I was involved, you were involved. Uh, we were all involved back in the early days of Radio TT. And then when Energy came, we started to do um, bits of live coverage. We weren't doing live commentary, we were doing live reports, and that's the difference. Then um, Jeff Cannell, um, there was, a, of course, a very high-profile situation. The lawyers let us flying around where Jeff had been sacked from the commentary. Um, so we took him on. And... Um, what energy had been doing up until that point nobody cared it, you know we were in the press center we were doing reports blah 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 but suddenly because we had jeff cannell on there was a right hullabaloo over it and jeff did a great job for us they tried to stop him then suddenly there became this there's now the rights and manx radio were given the rights carte blanche we were assured in 2006 that that was only for three years well, the three years went on for three years, for six years, for ten years, and the rights never, ever came up for offer. Although you did attempt, I think, to, to get more access, didn't you? Um, we were eventually given access to Manx Radio's commentary, ah. where we were allowed to take a certain amount of minutage of it um, interspersed in our own reports. Basically, we were actually doing what we were already doing, so it was a bit of a fuss over nothing, really. But we always said that really, you know, big sporting events like this, the rights should be going out so that the, uh, the, the owner of the event gets the best deal. Eventually, just before COVID, the government did put the, um, the rights out to tender and there was a tender process which we spent a considerable amount of time um, putting in for. Oh, you were putting in to have the rights to cover it in full? Or well, just more, the rights more... were to produce it. Oh, okay. Um, now, obviously, part of our, our tender, I can be quite open about this, uh, you know, as far as I'm concerned, it's not a secret. Um, we'd put in to produce the product and obviously to, to transmit it digitally online um, via local FM services around the course and all the rest of it. Um, our bid also would have included the ability should, set, for example, and this is hypothetical, Manx Radio wanted to carry it on their AM then it would have been available. So in other words, we produced the programme. Anyway, uh, we had a meeting with the department and they were due to make their announcement on the Friday or something like that. And then, of course, COVID. the world went down with COVID and the whole thing was just left up in the air. And we don't know for this day, to this day quite what happened to that. It just went, it was just uh, filed. Okay, so um, moving on, things have changed as I said at the beginning of this whole thing now because yeah. and I'm sort of trying to get my head around does the government now make these programmes and yes. then give them to the broadcasters yeah what, what's happening is um, the government have effectively taken the production in-house of the TT commentary so, so they will be Radio TT will they? they they will be Radio TT they have the rights to the TT oh, name okay. um, and they're producing the product now I'm, I'm delighted to say that the product they're producing 
has a lot of similarities to our bid. Oh um, no! Sorry, well, it, it does, and okay. um, you know, I'm I'm not unhappy about that. I'm I'm pleased because I believe that what we were offering was the way the commentary should have been going. And so this is coming from helicopters and screens, and well, rather yeah. than having people sitting in well, bo it, it, boxes. Yeah, in terms of the product, I mean, it's not identical, but it's broadly yeah. similar. And I'm I'm delighted that they're using uh, to produce the program the person that we were going to use to produce the pro to produce our program that we'd put in the bid. Right. So the, the senior producer of the new radio coverage is who was part of our bid. Right. So you can read into that whatever you like. But they're using uh, Manx Radio people, aren't they? I think well, I remember, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, and, uh, I'm not Chris? going to go into the people we had signed up, but remember Chris Kinley's freelance, oh, okay. so you know he, he, he could have been on the line-up no matter who had it. Um, and uh, I, I gather the other people, the other talent that they've approached to be on it are, are all on individual contracts direct with the department. They're not through any of the broadcasters. Oh. So they're producing the whole product um, based at the grandstand. The commentators are going to have access you know, to all those feeds. And I think, I think what they're doing is going to be great. But the great thing for us is we've been campaigning for access to this material for nearly 20 years. And we've now got the access to the material in full. But will you turn into a commentary station like obviously Manx Radio will be covering it as well and will you be doing the same thing or how's it going to work out? Um, yes and no. On our uh, digital platform, so online, we're able to broadcast the whole thing uh, down our, uh, our channels. Um, on FM, we're going to be continuing to do what we've always done. So we will, go, we will be uh, giving you live updates, live reports. Um, we will be going over live for the start of the race uh, mm -hmm. from the official commentary. We'll be going back to the official commentary, so it'll be a bit more like a sort of a, a five live dipping in, okay. mixed with the usual programming we've got. Okay, so that's going to be interesting to see this all come about. But yeah. back to the, I suppose, why we came in here, the whole idea of these changes and the live TV and all that, setting aside all of these other things that you're involved in, what do you think is the whole idea? Well, live TV originally was a non-starter because it was television and as you know it was the old we had to get in before Trevor McDonald news at 10 and all of that sort of thing broadcasters were never going to put up with there's an hour delay because there's mist on the mountain the because you've got the internet now the, the show can start when the show starts you know you're not trying to get in amongst Coronation Street and all these other scheduling things that go on in mm. uh, traditional television. So the fact we've now, you know, everybody, well, I say everybody, most people have got access to good quality data on their smartphones. They've got iPads. They've got, you know, mm. internet at home in the office. So the delivery of the content is, is you know, everybody can get it basically if they really want to. Um, 14 99 isn't it? Well, I'll come to that in a minute. I, th okay. I mean, I think that's good value. You know, you yeah. think of what you p some people pay to watch a boxing match that's over within a few minutes, you know, <laughs> I've done a that. couple of minutes. Yes. So, but I think the delivery now is, 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 is that much more easier to do. They've still got the challenges, of course, of getting the signals back from the cameras around the course, which, again, it's, it's all doable these days. So to bring the TT live to an audience is certainly these days viable whereas you know 15 years ago it was pretty much a non-starter mm. um i've always keep asking everyone really do you think people will come back do you think the riders will come back do you think the tt is safe and will almost have a rebirth here well i mean if we you know if we could had a crystal ball we'd all be mm. uh, much better off wouldn't we um i don't know it's like all these sporting events they have to evolve um, we've seen it before with, with some of the old names retiring and things and, and new new blood comes in. Um, the TT, like a lot of motorsport, has suffered. Um, I know other forms of motorsport have suffered with the, the sort of the extra cost and things, but the TT, because it's organised by the government, does have quite a financial backing. So I think if any event has got a good future, it's the TT. Um, and I think part of that is modernising it. And um, television and bringing that to an audience worldwide is definitely the way. I think they're going the right way. I really do.